Hello, I'm Bert from Bon Brewery in Ruslare in Belgium. Hello Bert, tell me, you're not a brewery, what are you? I'm a mold bakery, so on purpose I didn't want to start a brewery, I wanted to make something new, so I decided to start a mold bakery. A mold bakery means that I'm starting with malt, and from malt on I'm roasting, toasting malt to create malt, specialty malts only for myself. And what do I mean with only myself is I mean it's, uh, the malt is freshly toasted. You can see when it's baked low temperature when you see an angel on my labels. You see when you see devil it's meaning the roasted. Roasted more like coffee-like touches. Baked is low temperatures more like a cookie. And all my malts are toasted fresh and only for my own beers, for no one else. That's one. So I'm baking my malt. The second thing I'm doing is roasting oak. Um, and roasting oak is to use oak as an ingredient uh, for my beers. So to start with oak this, this time, so with oak I am using our Belgian oak and Belgian oak is coming from the Ardennes, from the south of Belgium and Belgian oak is familiar, um, it's actually very bad to make barrels with because it's not so good to, for leakage and it's got a huge amount of tannins so it's a very unpleasant uh, oak to use but when you toast it, you, the, the oak is getting very soft, very gentle, and it's creating a lot of new aromas. So this, for example, is how it looks when it starts. And when you, if you have the chance to smell, it's more like an acidic, very pungent, and very, not really pleasant aroma. The moment it's toasted, it's getting a more caramelized, sugary flavor. So people who are used to work with uh, oak, the moment you grind it, you get an aroma. It's a similar aroma uh, to use. So this beer, this oak is used for a Belgian oak, which is one of my beers, and the full moon. And it gives a kind of a sweetness, a touch, and a body. So it's really brewing with oak. The target is not to mimic a barrel. It's really brewing with oak. Because uh, mimic, copy, I'm not making a copy. If you ever see the label of the full moon, you will see on the label I'm actually chopping up a barrel just to, see, just to ex Explicit show it's not uh, done with it. It's done in this moment still in a simple oven. And this was used as a bake-off oven in a supermarket in Lemberg, the east of Belgium. So I started in the east of Belgium uh, eight years ago uh, with my place which was 35 square meters because it was the maximum I was allowed to build. And from that point out I, I started with, with first my malt and then the oak. The oak used in the beginning for the full moon. Why it was named full moon? Because this uh, oven was on wheels and I was rolling out the oven when it was full moon so at full moon I had a sufficient amount of light to toast outside. So this is the, um, the um, oak roasting thing uh, which I want to experiment more in the future with uh, which means new types of oaks, uh, different types of oaks from the world, uh, the roots uh, and different parts. This is more like a fun project for the future. It took me a few months before I really understand, understood how to roast oak. Because if you do it wrong, it's, you get a flavor like a pencil. If you do it correct, you get nice and beautiful aromas. So this is the oak roaster. Then the second one is um, actually my start is a mold bakery. And it looks like a coffee roaster, but it's not a coffee roaster. It, um, it was, this machine itself was a prototype to roast coffee, but they failed. And when I was on the way to look to roast my malt, I found a supplier, we had a lot of discussions. And this is actually the way I'm explaining this. This is an exactly wrong machine to make uh, specialty malts. Um, why? Because it's very specific depending from the size uh, of uh, the batch, depending from the weather you got different flavors. And I'm calling this exactly wrong because by doing things exactly wrong, I always mean you can create something new. If everyone is doing the same thing over and over and over again, you all get a similar product. By doing things exactly wrong, it means you do something totally different uh, to create new flavors. So in this machine, the malt is coming in from the top. So I'm, it starts with malt. That's uh, not a mistake in what I'm saying to you. It's, it's really starting with malt, coming to the top, coming in the kind of a drum roaster. It's a closed environment, so not a lot of aromas are lost. Uh, depending from time, temperature, uh, humidity, uh, I create a new malt. Malt is coming out into this cooler 
and the coolant is actually used to cool down quickly so to stop the process. So I'm also, I'm also uh, roasting um, oat malt, rye malt, uh, sometimes roasting caramel malts, uh, double roasting black malts, just to create new things. And why a malt bakery? Because the, the pores to make malt itself is, needs a lot of water. Um, it's not easy to do in itself. And I really wanted to create flavor and really wanted to focus on the flavor part. From this part out, the malt is blended. Um, on top, I got uh, fridges where I got my hops. I got my salt for brewing and everything. It comes together in one big brewing package with, of which the brewer has no clue what it's in. And it's called bomb packages. So they get six bomb packages and one bomb package is said, uh, please add this to the mashing in and the brewer has no idea what's in. Then bomb package two is uh, add this in the beginning of uh, boiling, in the beginning, end of boiling, middle of boiling, and everything like this. So I was actually creating my um, own blends. At this moment, I'm working with three different breweries. Uh, why three different breweries? Because it's very difficult to find a brewery who can do everything perfect at once. Uh, so one brewery is even a Dutch brewery, and which is also in Lemberg, in the east of, uh, close to the east of uh, Belgium. And they have horizontal fermenters, horizontal uh, maturation tanks. And I prefer to work with a brewery which is from other, not from Belgium, but who got the perfect equipment for what I want to do as really one willing to be, to be in Belgium. Tell me Bert, we also saw a very old Rodenbach. So this is uh, the barrel of 4,800 liters. And you can see it's in the name, it's uh, Brauhons Nuremberg. Um, barrel is estimated from 1892 and I'm always like thinking like this, it's like a squirrel who's put in 1592 uh, <laughs> some seed in the, in the ground uh, to come to this barrel. The, the background uh, was told by Brode Bohm. Frank Bohm told me this is the originating because he bought some barrels at that time from the same batch. Uh, that's originating from it. But uh, okay, it was also used for the wine for a while. We, it took us a few months to get it ready again. We got in, scraped everything out, cleaned it, sanitized it, sterilized it, and then blended all our beers in. And now it's just a matter of time. It's gonna be ready maybe in a few months, but for the same reason I will keep it for one year. So it's really an ongoing process from uh, wine yeast, champagne yeast, bretonomyces, different types, lactic bacteria, and who knows what else is in. So it's a blend, it's pretty good. All right, Ready? really looking for that. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Cuisine?